The D4000 Auto Optic is a full ISO ANSI barcode verifier. In order for a verifier to be fully compliant, it must inspect all eight ISO ANSI parameters, which requires measuring the barcode at a fixed distance and angle. The Auto Optic does this by being in direct contact with the barcode sample. Looking at the underside of the unit, you can see two lights. Most likely one will be glowing red and the other will look to be off. The one that looks to be off is actually an infrared light source and is invisible. Should both lights appear off, check your settings and ensure the wavelength is set to 660 nanometers. Looking straight down into the unit, you can see the lens that focuses the light on the sensor that measures the barcode. To scan a barcode, start by pressing the on button to power up the unit. Next, place the barcode to be tested on a flat surface and set the auto optic so that the sensor is about two inches before the barcode. Slide the auto optic across the barcode in a smooth motion. Quicker is better. And continue to move the auto optic until the sensor is one or two inches past the barcode. Starting and ending beyond the barcode is important because the verifier needs to look at the quiet zones before and after the barcode to properly grade the code. This also helps to ensure a smooth motion while measuring the barcode. If you've set your D4000 to require multiple scans of the barcode, you will need to repeat the process while scanning different areas of the barcode until you have captured the number of scans programmed into the unit. After capturing the barcode, the verifier will play either a good or bad tone, depending on the barcode quality, and will display information about your barcode. On the LCD screen, the top line will display the data encoded into the barcode. The second line will show the barcode type and the minimum passing grade that is programmed into the unit. This is depicted by the minus sign between two letters on the A, B, C, D, F characters. On my unit, the minus is between the C and the D, which is set to allow passing any barcodes greater than A, B, or C, and failing any D or F barcodes. For the third line, on the LCD will be the ANSI letter grade result. You will notice that for my barcode, I received an A grade. The 06 identifies the size of the light, or aperture, that was used to inspect the barcode. The correct aperture is based on the smallest bar width in the barcode, and RJS offers a chart to look up what the proper setting should be based on your barcode size and type. The last setting on this line is the wavelength, or color of light, used to inspect the barcode. Unless you're printing an invisible barcode, your verifier should always be set to 660, red. The last line on the LCD is the same information as the line above, but in the isonumeric format. The grade is a 0 to 4.0 scale, with an A grade being 3.5 to 4.0, a B being 2.5 to 3.5, and so on. After reviewing the general information, if you would like to learn more or troubleshoot your barcode, you can press the Enter button, which will toggle the system into the Results Viewing mode. This mode will allow you to cycle through various results by pressing the Select button. On my verifier, the first results display are Reference Decode and Decodability. Reference Decode is the most basic barcode check and is pass or fail. It includes checking the barcode pattern, that all the bars and spaces are valid, valid check digits, etc. Decodability is the accuracy of the bars and spaces when compared to their ideal widths. You will find a percentage and a corresponding letter grade next to decodability. This is the inspection result for this parameter. Pressing the select button again will bring up symbol contrast, which is the difference between the brightest space and the darkest bar in the barcode. It is also expressed both as a percentage and letter grade. R min R max is the test to ensure the darkest black is less than half of the brightest white. The next screen displays EC min and modulation. EC min is the grading parameter for how sharp or fuzzy the bar space transition is. Modulation is similar to simple contrast. While simple contrast is the biggest difference between the bar and space reflectance, modulation is the worst case of contrast between an adjacent bar and space. Pressing the select button again will take you to defects, which can either be ink splatter in the spaces or voids in the bars. 
Should you get a defect percentage over 50%, it is likely caused by text or graphics in the quiet zone before or after the barcode. It could also be a bearer bar that is too close, or a barcode that is too close to the edge of the label. The last ISO ANSI parameter is application compliance. This parameter is pass-fail, A or F, and tests if the format of the barcode is valid. After the application compliance screen, the data encoded into the barcode is displayed. Pressing the Select button will bring up the Modulo check character, which is a method for the scanner or verifier to determine if the scan was valid. For a UPCA, it works by running the first 11 digits through a mathematical calculation to get an expected mod check character, then scanning the 12th digit and comparing the scanned mod check character. If they match, it is a valid scan, and if not, the barcode is graded F. Next is the size of the UPCA barcode inspected. This is based on the settings and not measurements of the barcode, and is important because it establishes the allowable print tolerance for the barcode. This completes the ISO ANSI parameters, and the next screen is the old traditional measurement parameters of PCS, Print Contrast Signal, Reflectance Minimum and Reflectance Maximum. These measurements are rarely used by today's printers. Pressing the Select button will take you to the final screen, which is the Bar Width Tolerance Display. The verifier will compare each bar in the barcode to the ideal width, and then determine how much it varies from a perfect barcode. A perfect barcode would have a single A in the middle of the chart. The A stands for Average. If the A is left of center, it indicates that the average bar width is narrower than ideal, and right of center is wider than ideal. Most often, you will also have one or more R's before and after the A. The R's identify the range of bar widths across the entire barcode when compared to ideal. Pressing Select again will now take you back to the start of the inspection results.